Stephen Han from Staccata in Hobart. Today I want to talk about the types of drills that you can do in HEMA. And the types of drills that you can do, there are two types of drills, technical drills and tactical drills, and this concept uh, comes from classical fencing. And let's start with technical drills. Technical drills are drills where you're teaching your body to do particular movements um, and we'll move on in the next video to look at tactical drills where we look at how to use those particular movements that your body's learned in a tactical situation and, and leading up to the whole fight but to start with technical drills you can't uh, fence you can't fight unless your body knows what to do so you've got to train your body what to do now technical drills can start with the simplest things, with stance, with footwork, with how to hold the weapon, uh, move on to how to make the basic attacks, cuts and thrusts. Uh, but we're going to start with, with paired technical drills. And the simplest form of paired technical drill is where somebody is making a basic attack and their opponent makes the basic defence and I'll show you a couple of examples of that now. What some people um, don't realise is that Quite complex actions also count as, as technical drills. I'm going to show you now an example where there is a, an attack, a counter-attack, a deception of that counter-attack, uh, and a response to that deception followed by a riposte. And the attack is uh, a, a downright blow in George Silver's system, uh, it's countered by a thrust to the underside of the arm, which is a technique that Silver explicitly describes. Uh, there's a deviation around that, that counter thrust to strike the upper part of the arm, and then there's a, a false edge expulsion uh, to defend yourself from that deviation, followed by a riposte to the head, and I'll show you that now. So I'm not going to go into a great deal of depth on technical drills. Suffice it to say that technical drills are t fixed drills where you're teaching your body to perform a particular action, right? And you can't expect to do that action in, uh, in a fencing bout or in combat unless you've first trained your body to do it. Important things with technical drills. You've got to stick to the drill, all right? Deviating, there, there are times when you can deviate from, from drills, but not in fixed technical drills. In fixed technical drills, you've got to play your part, all right? One other critical thing is, it is in creating technical drills, it is absolutely vital that the technical drill be something that you actually do in bouting, that some, it be a practical skill that people are then going to be, then going to use, and are going to be able to use in bouting and fencing. And I might recommend that if if people can't put the basics into practice, then there's really very little to be gained by doing more complex technical drills. Okay, you're better off sticking with the basics until you can actually do those basics in fencing uh, before you go on to the more complex drills because otherwise you'll just get yourself confused. Now, let's move on to the other type of drill which are tactical drills. Now, tactical drills are a lot more complex and complicated. Tactical drills are where you put your technical drills into practice. 
and tactical drills have to bridge the gap between the technical drills where you know what's coming and you're just training your body what to do and actual bouting, actual fencing. And there are a number of ways to do this. One of the most basic ways that I'm going to show you in a moment is we simply combine uh, a number of technical drills. So, for example, if you have drilled how someone would respond in George Silver's system, uh, if they're in the uh, if they're in true garden fight, how they would respond to various attacks from open fight, you can simply combine all those and have the attacker mix up the attacks. Okay, so now the defender. They're still the defender, they're still in, in a particular uh, fight, in true garden fight, and they have to maintain that role, but, and they know they're going to be attacked, but they don't know what, what attack it's going to be, right? So they have to pick it and apply the correct defence, and we can see that here. Now a, slight, a slightly more complex version of this would be um, that you can actually do it while in motion. Uh, it's my belief that um, Silver's instruction in this particular case that let all your gatherings in that fight in true garden be to your enemy's right means that you should circle around to your left as you're, um, as you're preparing to defend and then your response with your feet when you're attacked is simply to keep walking on keep walking on that circle that you're already walking on. Um, so we can introduce movement uh, rather than doing it as a static, I'm standing here, you're, you attack me, I'll respond. We can move as we would in a real bout and we can see that here. Another place where we can uh, use a tactical drill would be, for example, in deciding whether to grapple or not. Uh, so we may have trained our grapples, we may have mixed up our attacks, uh, we've delivered a range of different attacks uh, where the response was to parry and then grapple. But one of the key decisions that you have to make uh, is whether or not to grapple and I'm in fact carrying an injury which you may be able to see because I chose to grapple at a rather inopportune moment uh, in about at our last training session um, and so a drill that you can do is that is you can have somebody launching attacks and sometimes those attacks will be quite shallow and uh, will, shouldn't lead to a grapple, and sometimes those attacks will be very deep, where once the parry has been made, a grapple is the appropriate thing to do, and we'll demonstrate that here. In some cases, you are able to use more than one type of defence. Uh, for example, in Silver's system, uh, if you're in true garden fight, your predominant way of defending will be to parry and riposte. But you have the option of making a counter-attack. And that option allows you some tactical flexibility and also makes the attacker a little bit wary. Are they going to parry and riposte? Are they going to counter-attack? Uh, and not knowing hopefully gives you as the defender an advantage. So rather than just mixing up the, um, the attacks that we make, we can have the defender mixing up their responses. Okay, so that makes a more complicated tactical drill. We've still got the attacker, in this case in open fight, the defender in garden fight, um, and the defender doesn't know what attack the attacker's gonna make, 
and now the attacker doesn't know what response the defender is going to make and we can see an example of that in the drill here. As you've seen, the more complex tactical drills become, the more they approach the reality of real fencing. And this brings in the concept that comes from classical fencing of the assault. The assault is not quite about. In about, you're trying to beat the other person, all right, and you'll typically fall back on the techniques uh, that you find most successful. In an assault, you can actually focus on techniques that you are having trouble with and you can deliberately focus on those so you are you are fencing with the other person but explicitly not counting points uh, or even worrying about who who gets hit and sometimes it's just a good mindset to get into to say I'm doing this as an assault all right because I want to work on this aspect of my fencing and an example of that would be that you might say, all right, I'm having trouble doing grapples from True Garden uh, and picking when the right moment to grapple is. So you can say to somebody, can you be an open fight and we'll fence and I want you to at some point put in a really deep attack that where I might be, it might be appropriate for me to grapple. So in every way, the you're actually fencing. You're actually doing real fencing, right? You're both trying to hit each other, uh, but you've agreed that one person will fight out of one guard, another person will only fight out of another guard, so we've got a, a, a clear attacker and defender. That's not to say that the person in true garden, if the other person in open is getting sloppy, can't launch attacks of their own. Obviously, true garden's not as well suited to that, but. And what you do is your fence in a way that you give the you give the, the person who needs the work uh, a chance to work on stuff that they're having problems with in a, a situation that that's almost that's like ninety nine percent real bouting okay and that's called the assault another type of tactical drill that you can use is where you have a complex technical drill. Now, something that I've found and that I know other instructors have found is that we have a particularly complex uh, technical drill where you have multiple moves following after each other, even if it's something that happens quite naturally in bouting, um, then you can have problems in that people, because they know it's a technical drill, they get sloppy and they say, all right, well, I know that, that this attack isn't supposed to land, uh, this counter-attack is going to be countered in its turn. So they don't actually try to do those, those attacks or counter-attacks properly. All right? And you end up, rather than going through one, two, three, four, they'll, they'll sort of mentally at least skip straight to four. And one way you can get around this is by making, allowing there to be a winner within the, the technical drill. Now, I say winner in the loosest possible sense. Um, so if we go back to the complex technical drill that we looked at earlier, we can actually do that as a competitive drill. So the attacker doing the downright blow, if they land, that's it, the drill's over, right? The person doing the counter-attack, the thrust to the underside of the arm, if that, if that thrust lands, that's it, they've, they've, they've hit their opponent, the drill is over. The deception around that counter-attack, again, if that lands, you've hit your opponent, the drill is over. And finally, only if everyone does each of the steps perfectly as if they're genuinely trying to hit the other person, then we finally get the expulsion and the and the repost. Okay, so in this way, by saying, "All right, there can be a winner," the drill doesn't necessarily have to go through to the end. Everyone then says, "All right, well, I'm genuinely trying to hit the other person at each point in this drill." Okay, and it becomes more like uh, 
what happens in real fencing. So, in conclusion, when we start learning to fence, whether that be modern fencing, classical fencing, HEMA, whatever, we need to do technical drills. And you should never stop doing technical drills. Right? I have been fencing, I've been doing HEMA for 30 years and I profit from doing technical drills. All right? Sometimes the problems in my own fencing arise because I'm running a class and I'm not doing the technical drills that I'm getting the other chaps to do. So we should always start with technical drills and even when I'm looking when I'm when I'm trying to focus on tactical drills, I will start a lesson with some technical drills. And for instance, if I want to look at the matchup between open and true garden, I might start off by saying, Alright, let's practice each of your each of your basic parry reposts, right? Then we'll do some, mix it up, uh, once you've done 10 or so of each of those and done them, done them technically correctly, then do a tactical drill where you mix it up, where you have random attacks, and then we'll move on to a more complex tactical drill that I might be planning for that lesson. Okay? So we need all the layers of drills that get us from, I know nothing, to I'm practicing my basic moves, to I'm practicing how to put those moves into a tactical situation, to more complex tactical situations, to real bouting. And if we don't have those in between layers, then it's really difficult to get from that, from those basic building blocks. We can't step over all those intervening steps straight into into actual bouting, right? We're really going to struggle to put those technical building blocks into action. So, technical drills, tactical drills. Thank you for watching.